Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we explored what little we could of Caduceus, since our soul wasn't in a fit state for the devils there. They didn't like us, wanted us to go back to Carillon and get it fixed. And then ended up going west of Pan to find the Eagle's Empyrean across the Midnight Belt, which is what this darker region is. So let's explore the Empyrean. This place looks gorgeous, looks vibrant and just brimming with life. They have three shops. I'm just trying to think. I'm pretty sure every port that isn't the main port only has two shops at most. Uh, anyway. A little piece of Albion on the edge of the Empyrean. Here, Her Majesty's Embassy works tirelessly to maintain cordial relations with the Imperials. London's Enclave. Her Majesty's Embassy dominates this little street, but the eagle stands above the lion and the unicorn on the street sign. London and the Canate work together to enter the High Wilderness, but their alliance sense has been tenuous. It's preserved only by desperate diplomatic endeavor and a number of carefully preserved fictions regarding what the other is up to. Let's get a port report. Eagle's Empyrean is a bastion of light in Eleutheria's dark. Beyond the antique facades of the Lane of Lions and Unicorns, the Empyrean rises high in steel and blue light. The constraints of its location necessitates that the Empyrean build upwards. Careful porticos give way to expansive temples and crowded markets. People live cheek by jowl. Light is precious and easily lost. Power is conserved carefully. When times are bad, whole districts go dark. It would be easy for hopelessness to seep in. The Khan occupies his people with festivals, celebrating his people's history of the old Khanate, and constant technological innovation. To be idle is to be afraid here. The Empyrean is busy at every hour. Let's introduce myself at the Embassy. They might be glad to receive news from London. Few captains dare venture into Eleutheria. You can get a visa here required to enter the Empyrean proper. Oh! A brisk welcome. The embassy is a fine example of Georgian architecture. Inside, the elegance gives way to a pandemonium of desks, where bureaucrats minutely scrutinize their correspondence. Any mistake could trigger a summons to the Khan and the possible expulsion of the embassy. Each is hunched with age, with hair as white as lustrum snow. The ambassador's secretary is assigned to handle incoming captains. He reaches over a mountain range of papers with a visa. Please don't make additional work for us. If you must visit the city, be polite. <laughs> okay, that was easy. You have a visa. Enjoy a respite at the Maiden and Unicorn, a tea shop on the edge of the lane, as close to home as one can be in Eleutheria. No matter how hard the decor tries, it can't mask the darkness visible from the window, nor soften the electric light of the Empyrean moon. Still, off-duty diplomats congregate around the triangle gut sandwiches. They drink steeped tea with translators, attaches, and runners. The main and unicorn is also popular with citizens of the Empyrean. Some come to sample the latest London cuisine, others to do unofficial business with London's embassy. Others, like everyone else, just come to get away from the dark. Let's ask about the transit relay to the Reach. Yeah, so this is the place beyond the Midnight Belt that uh, the Cypress King told me could take me back to the Reach since this one, er, this one, is not working. Few diplomats would accept a posting here if they couldn't return to British territory. They know of a way back. Rivalry. The gentleman is immediately obliging. We really should put a sign up. It lies to the west of Pan, anti-clockwise around the region from here. It's under Empyrean control, of course, in accordance with the treaty. He smiles the broad smile of a practiced liar. We thought it would be a nice gesture. Let them think they control their borders and all that. For all his confidence, he checked for Empyreans in earshot before saying that. 
Wait, it lies to the west of Pan, anti-clockwise around the region... For, wait, what? I am west of Pan, what are you talking about? <laughs> this, <laughs> this is west of Pan. Is it like, just like right back here? Like right behind the Empyrean? Maybe? Could be. What do they mean by counterclockwise? Counterclockwise how much? Wait, huh? Any? I mean, if you move from this position, you're not west of Pan anymore. I don't understand at all. The Empyrean. The electric and neon jewel in the Eagle Khan's crown, and the only Empyrean city in the High Wilderness. A solitary bastion of brightness in the long night of Eletheria. Repair my locomotive. Oh, can I fully repair it with money and not mysteries? The engineers of Illuminated Engineering are locomotive experts. Yes, I can. Oh, beautiful. They're not permitted to share their knowledge with Londoners, but if you'll step away from the, the yard while they work, we'll happily repair your engine. It'll cost, of course. Three sovereigns per point of hole lost. Is that more expensive than it normally is? I, I don't care either way. 54 sovereigns. Glad to pay it. Nice to finally have a full hold. Hold. Full hold? A, a full hole. Full hole. Wow, that is not fun to say. The visa checkpoint. A modest checkpoint stands at the end of the lane of lions and unicorns. Visitors to the Empyrean must have their papers checked. There's a queue to get past the guards, but it moves efficiently. Oh, this is another place where you, uh, I guess, will be checked for contraband. Hmm. Have your visa checked by the guards. They're ready to inspect your papers. You're welcomed to the one true civilization in Etheria. You are as free to explore as any citizen. Oh, and suddenly, oh my god, there's so much to do here. I mean, these aren't one specific thing. So these are just like go to the market where I'm sure there's going to be other stuff. And I'm sure there's going to be stuff here. And we have the, uh, the, uh, I always forget their first part of their name. The what navigator? The fortunate? Yeah, fortunate navigator. We have their quest to do. We need to get their friend's body to take aboard so we can fulfill their promise to take them on adventure. Um... Hmm, what to, what to do first? Did I have something to give them? Yeah, the Thirsty Bombazine. Let's just do that right now. Your crew unloads the cargo onto the dock while you ponder where to take it. The clattering of a stone distracts you. When you look back, the crates are gone. In their place, your payment, delicately wrapped and finished with a bow. Mysterious and also good sense of style at the same time. That is a lot of munitions. A stammering eelmonger has a brother who captains one of the Empyrean Outriders. Sometimes the brother ensures crates of ammunition go missing. And then a skyfarer like yourself gets a very good deal on crates of munitions. I'll leave that for when I go to leave, see how much space I have left. Let's check out these other shops too. The Blue Heaven Arsenal. The Empyrean specializes in technology, electricity, and weaponry. Only the latter may be traded to those outside the Eagle Khan's military. Wait, only the latter may be... Former... La Is it... I think they... Messed this up. Technology, electricity, and weaponry. Only the latter. The latter being weaponry. Only the weaponry may be traded to those outside the Eagle Khan's military? That doesn't make any sense. It must mean only technology and electricity can be given to people outside of the Eagle Khan's military. Ladder does mean what I think it does, right? Ladder. Occurring or situated near to the end of something, then to the beginning. Yeah. I think they meant to say former? That or I'm just really missing something. Illuminated Engineering. Oh, whoa. The Empyrean Engine Yards produce one engine. The light, bright, sprightly Altani Outrider. 
Available nowhere else, it is the pride of Empyrean technology and the finest weapon in the war against the liberation of the night. In Electric Wonder, the Altani is a far-ranging, versatile explorer. It's the pride of the Empyrean, and they guard its production zealously. It's the finest weapon in the war against the liberation of night. Well, I'm not exactly joining the war against the liberation of night. But we also don't love them. Elizabeth doesn't love them either, though. We're not really sure. Kind of in the middle on them. Um, trade for... Oh, it's just like the same price, that's why. So it'd be just a sideways trade. So let's see what's different. It has one less armor slot. It has one more auxiliary slot. It has ten less health. It has three more hold space. Two more people. And more fuel efficiency. Um, hmm. One less armor plus less health equals quite a bit less health. But it does have a heavy weapon slot. Hmm. Hmm. Having only one armor slot means when I want to transport contraband, I won't be able to transport as much because I use the armor slots for the concealed compartments. I wouldn't mind going a little bit less combat focused, I suppose. Another a three auxiliary would be really nice. But that compartment thing... Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna get it right now. I, I'm gonna say no to it. I might reconsider in the future. Let's do the fortunate navigators, promise. Journey towards Bora Girl, Bo Bora Girl, Bora Girl Graveyard. The fortunate navigator knows the way. Best not tell the guards where you're going, however. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guards, uh, don't mind me. We're just gonna take a body. Tourists have no business in graveyards. Gopping at tombs is a peculiarity of the British, viewed with suspicion. Each street is lit by evenly placed electric lights. The light is cold and casts hard shadows. Empyrean citizens hurry by in silks and cloth. There's always somewhere to be in the Empyrean. All who live here work. There's no space for idleness. Spot a bespectacled official. An imperial man has been following you since you left the lane of lions and unicorns. An offer for information. The bespectacled official sidles next to you and adjusts his cravat. I need an observer to bring me the latest ongoings. On ongoings on? Ongoings on. In Eleutheria. A traveler would suit my purposes very well. Uh, perhaps we could discuss it over a little tea and a friendly game of mahjong. There's a little park on the lane of lions and unicorns. I'll be by the rosebush. Walk away. A rosebush? The gentleman must be a member of the Rose Without Thorns, the Empyrean's foreign office. He wishes you to spy for him. The bespectacled official looks on with visible amusement as you hurry away. He waves as you depart. Request an Eagle's Empyrean. Port reports are in demand in the Eagle's Empyrean. A strange gentleman has accosted you in the streets. So maybe I would get extra money and stuff for turning in port reports here, but I'd be spying for the Eagle's Empyrean. I don't know if I'd want to do that. I, I don't have any particular feelings about the Eagle's Empyrean right now. Enter... Or a girl graveyard. Oh, but before that, the graveyard is at the end of this quiet street. Not many people travel here. The electric lights are fewer, barely keeping away the dark. Some of the stone tombs are as small as a locomotive's brig. Others are large as bank vaults, with walls twice as thick. Electricity is not wasted on the dead. Instead, a caretaker regularly replaces the candles in every nook, on every corner of each plinth. The embalmed rest in an unsteady gloom. Brooding stone shadows shift uneasily. So, steal a corpse or distract the caretaker. 81% chance of stealing the corpse. You have the key to the tomb, you just have to get the body out past the caretaker and back to your locomotive, without anyone noticing. 
Failure will lead the Empyrean to assume you are a London agent, stealing the corpse for nefarious reasons. It may cost you to soothe things over. Uh, let's distract the caretaker. She works in the flickering dark, away from the Empyrean's electric light. Perhaps she'd appreciate hearing of the incandescently sublime. Wrapped. The caretaker sits with you on a low stone slab at the far edge of the graveyard. She listens in silence. A flaring candle catches something glinting on her cheek. When you leave, she remains in quiet contemplation. The navigator is waiting by the graveyard gate. He grins awkwardly. He has used rope to tie the corpse's desiccated wrists to its ankles and is wearing it like a knapsack. <laughs> the corpse's head lulls against his shoulders, its embalmed face almost restful. Back at your locomotive, the navigator meets your eye, then bursts into incredulous laughter. <laughs> what the f- That is so- That is so grim and weird and funny. Used a rope to tie the corpse's desiccated wrists to its ankles. I'm just picturing that, and is wearing it like a knapsack. What the fuck? <laughs> and that's their friend. <laughs> I guess their friend probably would have appreciated the humor. I don't know, they know him better than I do. It, in the in the sense that I literally didn't know them at all. All right, let's go speak with them. Ask what he intends to do with the corpse. As you enter the navigator's cabin, he preempts anything you might say by shouting, "Bring me a map. Uh, something that says here be monsters." Then a pause. Uh, please, comrade. An eager demand. Alton's body is propped to the navigator's desk chair, cushioned with his pillow. Embalming has preserved the body. Its limbs are too thin, its skin a greenish gray, but it looks peaceful. It faces the window, but, and it is probably for the best, the eyelids are shut. The navigator talks while he works, scrolling circles and routes on your chart. King Gesser, Gesser? Gesser was a slayer of demons. We must battle a monster of the skies. Something fearsome. Maybe a senior Scrivener, a scorn fluke, or one of the undeparted. Something worthy of a song. The map he returns to you is so enthusiastically marked that it is unusable. <laughs> you only need kill one monster. Oh, we lost an unlicensed chart. Oh, you ruined it with your scribblings. Okay, scorn fluke, senior Scriveners, or undeparted. I'm sure we'll run across one pretty soon. Uh, wait. You're only allowed to visit once every fortnight. Frequent visits are regarded with suspicion. Oh, shit. I guess I should have waited to talk with the fortunate navigator. Whoops. Um. Oh, right, the bespectacled official. Can I just, like, get another visa? Can I get, like, a special visa? Visit the embassy? Oh, I can warn the ambassador of the bespectacle official. Oh. Smuggle artifacts into the Empyrean. The game is too precarious at present. The balance of the game... What is the game? I don't like that. Um, let's ask how we might help the embassy. Perhaps the ambassador has some special requests. The House of Rods and Chains. The ambassador swirls the brandy in his glass. London is entirely open with her imperial allies. That being said, if we had illicit eyes in the field, I imagine they would have had difficulty getting reliable reports from the House of Rods and Chains. A shame. I have money put aside for exactly that kind of information. House of Rods and Chains lies to the north, northeast of Pan. That's a very interesting name. House of Rods and Chains. North, northeast. So it's like here. The bespectacled official. He greets you at his customary table in the park, wearing a warm smile so genuine it must be practiced. Ah, comrade. 
Will you join me in playing my favorite game? Oh, that must be the game. It's clear he's not speaking of Mahjong, though the table is set and ready for a playground. Um, hmm. Smuggle ministry permits into the Empyrean. Must be more popular with the Empyrean. Well, let's do the first thing. Play a game of Mahjong with the official. The air is warm. The tea is hot. The moon is burning bright. The unspoken business of spycraft can wait. A quiet moment. The official offers you two teas, one more suited to the English palate, the other to that of Empyrean's. There's value in being comfortable with both sides, he says. I spent some time in London myself many years ago. A fine place, fine people. Alas, family duties called, as did my current position serving the rose without thorns. I do still like to keep up with the latest gossip, however. My generous con is known to value it as well. Exchange plaques from Dowser engines for money. So the Dowser engines were the fanatical liberation of night people. The one that attacked me in the, the midnight belt right here. I mean, sure. Like, why not? You can have it. That's fine. The bespectacled official's smile fades. The liberation of night. Their ships take a special interest in our scouts and their lanterns. We return the favor. Let me show you my con's gratitude for your assistance. Your plaque from a dowser engine quality has gone. Fifty sovereigns. Ask about the con's current interests. On the off chance, you should be traveling in that direction. The House of Rods and Chains remains an uncomfortable mystery on our borders. It's a difficult place for our people to remain inconspicuous inside. Perhaps you could be my eyes. The official carefully places a mahjong tile on the board. Your move. Both the bespectacled official and the London Embassy will pay for this report. Hmm. Well, okay, I don't have any particularly strong feelings about the Eagle's Empyrean, which means I... I, I mean, Elizabeth's like, sure, you want to pay me for this stuff? Yeah, I don't care. It's kind of what we do. Gathering the sorts of information. We're definitely not going to work for the London Embassy. We're not doing anything with London and, and Her Majesty, Her Renewed Majesty. Hell no, but the Empyrean? Sure. So that's probably all I can do, right? Because I can't enter again. Enjoy another respite. It's the same respite as before. No, not repair. Just wanted to double check that 15 days haven't passed in the last zero days. No, indeed they haven't. I'm thinking the gateway to the Reach might be reached from inside of Eleutheria. So I can't check again until 15 days have passed and I can go inside of it. But then again... No, right? Because you always have to pull into a relay. I'm going to look behind Eleutheria, because the one person who mentioned it's to the west of Pan counterclockwise made no sense. I Let's just look behind Eleutheria. Maybe it's there. And I guess I'll buy as many of these as I can. Yeah, that must be it. I don't know what that person was talking about counterclockwise. This one leads to the Reach, the tentative domain of Victoria. The Empyrean has staffed the relay with smartly dressed officials with military bearing. Londoners, of course, may not travel on the magnanimity of the Eagle Khan. You will need to pay. Present yourself to customs. Wave through. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, actually, I'm just going to go to the Reach right now because I do have a couple things to do there. The biggest of which is I need to go finish the Grave, uh, the Regent's Grave quest. It's been a year. It's been a little bit more than a year. So we can travel with 200 sovereigns or three crates of munitions. Yeah, I guess that's a little bit cheaper. We could do with a top-up of munitions. We're experiencing a temporary scarcity. The official smiles. Temporary. Okay. What are you going to do with them? Have fun. I think this is the same description that we see pretty much every time. It's not the date that it was. Yeah, it's been, I think, two or three days. By the way, where are we going to show up in the reach at? Is it going to link to the same relay that we came through? It would have to, right? Yeah. Good old reach. Um, I guess I should go right back to New Winchester. I mean, I don't have to. I could just go straight for Trader's Wood. Let me see what other stuff I have to do here in my journal. I actually only have two quests, really, in the Reach. Of course, the Regent's Grave alone is worth it, but the other one is to deliver a Christmas card. I don't know if it's really a Christmas card or a secret message or what, but deliver a quote-unquote Christmas card to Palmyre and Plenty's Circus. That's from the uh, Winter Winter's Reside, I think it was called. The one of three groups in Pan that I'm trying to join. So let's head over on... Uh, on over to the circus, and then... And then I guess I'll go over to New Winchester. I'll be so close at that point. I might as well restock. Got some space for the Bronzewood. Success. One Bronzewood. Because I might as well get a port report here. At Hybris too, right? It's right here. Oh, I don't think I can get a port report. But uh, let's have some shore leave, join the crew in their song, reduce terror by a little bit. Yeah, tried all that. Doesn't work. Oh, hey, bargain. Now off to the circus. Unsettled dreams. The sky of your dreams is blazing gold, crowded with suns. So we've seen that before. Once again, seek company with the incognito princess. <laughs> Failure for the 20th time. Problem shared. Had the same dream. Hello, good old Polmer and Plenties. New arrivals, listen to their stories. Free tickets. Uh, whoops, didn't mean to do that again. Uh, I guess we still have a poor aboard from them. Let's attend another performance, get some more stories. Four sky stories, a vision of the heavens. Visit the amusements. Let's keep doing that until my terror is completely gone. Although, eh, 14% is low enough because it's going to go down once I go to London. Probably down to zero. The card is addressed to something I can't pronounce at all. He's the cleaner at Palmyre and Plenty's. You find the man by the animal cages, sweeping. So uh, I looked that up. That is apparently Welsh, which according to Google Translate, it, this translates into the Welsh speaker. So it's it's not addressed to like an actual person, just the Welsh speaker? Or, or wait, actually, no. People in this world don't really have normal names. So actually the Welsh speaker is... Probably their name, yeah. He tears the envelope open and reads furiously. It's some moments before he can bring himself to speak. I spoke Welsh, only to my family. There was no harm. He shakes his head. But someone tattled and the auditors had to check, didn't they? The auditors even agreed. There was no harm. Not that anyone believed me. The auditors wouldn't visit unless you were in trouble, right? He grimaces. 
couldn't stay in London, could I? I had to leave my family. I couldn't risk tainting them. He waves the card at you. I'll join your council. I'll meet the contact now. I don't totally understand... What's up with the card? They're not being blackmailed, right? Is this just an offer basically saying, we know you've been screwed over, so hey, you want to help us stick it to him? But I'm not sure. Some seeds. Yeah, grab a couple seeds and off to New Winchester. Back at New Winchester now. Went ahead and repaired my ship, and yeah, just entering here reduced my terror to 0%. I'm going to do a couple of quick prospects, because I just had a look, and there's actually two prospects for Port Avon. One for five Bronzewood, and another for three seeds. Unfortunately, I only have two seeds in my bank, but hey, it's something. And Port Avon is just right down here. And as you probably noticed with these concealed cavities, I'm intending to go up to Titania to get some more frickins of red honey. At Port Evan now. Did all the basics, got a port report, all that good stuff. Let's give him the five bronze with that's gonna be a good profit. And a couple seeds. I'm just gonna get rid of the prospect now. I don't wanna carry this thing around. And they have a bargain for five ministry approved literature, which is really good. I always need this stuff. Oh, I can't fit it all. Uh I'll just dump one of the fuel then. That's fine. Oh no, it's the dog who is too large. They are in the driver's cabin. The locomotive shudders and shakes like a racehorse on the cusp of their last great adventure. You enter to find the driver, the driver strapping goggles to the inadvisably big dog. They won't leave, the driver shrugs, scratching behind an ear. Since he won't leave, I decided he might as well be properly equipped. It was an effort to get him to sit still, and he's showing no sign of leaving. Make a spectacular distraction outside. You exit the cabin with the driver and begin to raise a ruckus. You sing a giddy duet while banging a rhythm into the door frame. Luckily for everyone else, it does not take long for the inadvisably big dog to emerge, ears perked in the direction of the noise. Just arrived at Titania, and the bees rallied to Titania's defense. I think it still gets a little bit damaged. Oh, I lose one crew. And I have some Corister Nectar, so that all the bees are going to try to kill me now. Thank you. I'll be ejecting that at the nearest opportunity. Let's attend an art ex exhibition just to get her terror down. Get a port report. To assist with port repairs. Pay for all port repairs, which is going to cost all of 10 sovereigns. Very impressive donation. You can pay for the broken bench. It's like, one of my crew died, but apparently the only damage to Titania is just something you can fix with 10 sovereigns. <laughs> ah. What is the porphyry font again? Oh yeah, you can donate different things. Well, again, not a donation. Transaction. Well, the Midnight Rose. Let's see what they have. Red honey for the Empyrean. Seven firkins. I can't possibly get that much though, because the thing is I already have um, I already need to deliver eight more firkins of red honey to the mausoleum. So, like, I, there's no point having two of these. I can't fit that much. I can only store six at one time if I want it all in my concealed compartments, which, of course, I do. Wait, this is another one for red honey to the mausoleum? My god. What's going on there? I love their honey. And they got crockery. I'm actually going to take this one. This is to deliver five frickins of red honey. I can complete that. This one that takes eight, that's impossible to complete. So, yeah, six places. Let's buy six of these. 
course, there is a temptation of the honey. I might lose some. Should I buy one more just to be sure? I'll buy one more. Because I might lose it on the way to leaving this place. But I'll have to ditch it if I still have it by the time I get to the relay. Yeah, that's fine. And I can't use this, right? No, fail 75 plus. Okay, well I got one more spot in my hold, so let's grab some crockery. I just leveled up from killing some bees. I was going to eject the honey, but then I thought, I can take the bees so easily. I'll just hold on to it. It only takes three of my secondary rockets. So many freaking bees around here, I just keep gaining experience. Because I don't have a hold space to take the honey. So I'm just on my way to the nature reserve. I keep taking detours because I'm like, you know, oh, I'll just go to the circus and the new Winchester. And then I thought, oh, wait, I could smuggle some stuff. So I'll go to Titania. And then I'm at Titania. So I think, well, I'm so close to the nature reserve and I have all those research things to turn in. So I just keep doing more and more. Anyway, I made it all the way from here to here. And we already have the temptation of the red honey. Um, I know from experience, and I might have did the, I think I did this off camera. If you make an example of them, that means lashing them. I don't think Elizabeth would do that. I think that increases terror, but I don't think you lose any of the honey. Or maybe you lose like one honey. This, I know you lose a couple honey if you fail it, and I only have a 52% chance of success. But this is what Elizabeth would do, so. Yes, thank God. If I failed it, I could just go back to Titania. It's just right there. The guards do an excellent job of keeping the precious honey safe. There are no more incidents. Let's turn in a million things. I'm going to be so rich. Wings of a chorister bee. 300 sovereigns. Ants from a homestead. 300 sovereigns. Sample of hybris pus. 300 sovereigns. Stomach of a cantankery. 250 sovereigns. Titanian cutting. 250 sovereigns. Fungal crinoline from a mushroom meteoroid. 300 sovereigns. Pen of a scribe spinster. 400 sovereigns. Jesus Christ. I almost feel like I'm like exploiting it by using it, but I mean, it's here. It's not an exploit. It's just... I feel like you should only be able to do it a couple times or something. Feels overpowered, honestly. How much money do I have now? Almost 10,000. Wow. That's almost enough money to buy one of those other super ships. Wow. Am I actually going to buy another ship already? Okay. Anyway. We're done here. Now I think it's time to actually go to Trader's Wood. Yeah, nowhere else I want to stop. No, definitely not. Let's go. We have arrived at the forest's edge at Trader's Wood. And I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to finally finish the Regent's Grave quest.